And it looks like we might be live. Well, welcome everybody. Just take a swig of my coffee. And a reminder, could everybody please mute? Um, Jordan, I'm getting a bit of noise from your microphone. So there, that's a bit better. Okay. Okay, so uh, we are recording. This is where we are, right? Um, lab six should just about be over. And let's, in fact, let's um, have a look at the assessment oh. calendar while we're here. So this is there. We've got individual lab six due this evening and then we've got the group lab seven the up down counter due next week and then a couple of weeks out we've got the baseball counter due and i need to talk today about um project because that's going to be the the big thing that uh, we need to get done right and I was hoping we could start with that today but um, we should be okay now I want to talk a little bit today about um, some problems that um, I've seen with uh, lab seven and lab eight and um, just so that she, to sh hopefully sharing the problems with everybody will will show you um, uh, will, will short circuit you having to have the same problems because uh, I know the students involved and I spent too much time trying to get to the bottom of some of these issues and uh, I thought we should talk about them. All we're going to be doing in this lab session, in this class session from now until the end of semester is pretty much labs. At the beginning, I'm going to be doing a, um, uh, what I normally do with this, this sort of slide. And um, if there are any issues have arisen during the week, I'll, I'll talk about them. But the main aim now is to get labs six, seven, and eight done and to select your project and get the projects done. Okay. Any questions about where we are with that so far? Let me just pull the uh, discussion up so that I can Yeah, that's interesting. My, uh, for some reason, Discord on the, um, is failing to load any messages on the discussion links and, oh, it's got reminders and it's got links and now it's got the discussion. Okay. It was just had a big red bar across the the chat saying messages failed to load okay so there we are um i think i've taught told you everything you need to know about vhdl um the only way to learn it properly is to actually do it with these projects or these labs so um that's what I suggest we do for the rest of the semester. What I'm going to do is probably down here in the in the last week of uh, in the the week after the Thanksgiving recess is to um, talk about uh, give a give a summary of the course and talk about the final. I'm hoping probably maybe next week 
um, I will release the final exam and it'll be very similar to the uh, in format if not in content to the um, the midterm so I will ask you some specific questions that you'll have to answer while we're online on Discord and then I'll give you some work that you have to do offline um, to uh, and submit into Blackboard um, yeah. so that's that's where we are in the semester it's not that many weeks to go um, and there's still a little bit to be done so I think maybe I did that the week before last um, I think you understand what is required of the labs although we're still working through them we don't know what's happening with the projects in much detail yet but I, I want to talk about that shortly and uh, I would like to get some feedback on the game because I haven't seen anybody uh, report their progress on the game yet so um, hopefully you can we can do that. I was going to ask, uh, when's it? When, when when when's the due date for like a, for the game? Um, the due date is basically uh, the end of semester, whenever the the everything's over. So as late as I don't know what. Uh, so probably around about the the, the date of the fall twelfth, maybe a day or two afterwards, but. Okay. around about December 12th okay in fact I, I think I set let, let me just check what I've set in blackboard because um, that'll right so there's the the game and I haven't set a due date right um, where it got to yeah I haven't set a due date so let's Let's just have a look at it so that it's available there and let's set it on the 12th just so that everybody knows. I'm not going to close it out after the 12th so um, you'll still be able to submit after the 12th but let's, let's target the 12th as the due date. Okay. Okay so now that should show up. That's one reason it's nice to have due dates. That'll that means it'll show up on the uh, the assessment calendar, whereas uh, it sort of doesn't show up as a on the assessment calendar. Um, just a reminder: you can actually put this into your phone just by uh, adding that uh, URL to your phone's calendar. Um, I've found it incredibly useful for me as as the professor so and I think uh, students might find it useful as well okay so projects um, <clears throat> I don't know how many of you will be able to do this um, because it requires having a uh, or it requires the person mm -hmm. with the the board to have a, a, a monitor with a VGA input may not be possible, but I, I thought it was I thought it was a pretty cute um, example. So this is, um, and I don't know how well this is going to translate to uh, going out over uh, over Discord, but. This was an example that um, uh, some of the students did a couple of years ago. Okay, so it's basically a, a single player version of the, the Pong game. And the aim is to try and make the ball bounce around. I think the if, if you miss the ball it, it actually bounces around anyway right so you, you you can see it went down below the bat because because the bat wasn't there but uh, and uh, basically everything you see here was run on the uh, it's one of it was actually run on one of the old FPGA boards we used to have 
Okay, so it's it's pretty cute. Uh, I think this is being displayed on the um, uh, on the screen in NC157. We had to have all the lights off because the the um, uh, the projector wasn't quite bright enough. Is there a reason why there's like almost a double shape, or is it just an artifact of the board? Um, I think it's an artifact of the board, and also um, just a little bit of ringing on the um, on the video signal, because it not only did so we had to connect the board up to the uh, the switch on the the table in the the corner there, and then it then it had to make it all self its way all the way up to the uh, to, to the projector, so I think it's just a little bit of ringing on the video signal that's making the uh, the halo effect there that you can see. Um, but everything that uh, this the FPGA um, there were two buttons, a left button and a right button, and uh, that was what uh, allowed the paddle to move left and right, and the uh, video signal, the whole video signal for the whole screen was being generated um, on the FPGA which meant the um, you know they had to select the uh, the color of the paddle and the col color of the board of the ball rather um, and then you they had to do the math for where the where the ball was bouncing and when it when it uh, Bounced off a wall or bounced off the edge of the screen. Okay, so that was that was kind of cute. Um, I do think we uh, we we took a bit of a shortcut with this one, um, but uh, and the other thing is this board, um, the the board that they used on this one actually had three bits of color for um, uh, per red, green, and blue channel. Um, the board we have only has one bit of color, so you can only turn on red or turn off red, turn on green, turn off green, turn on blue, turn off blue. So you really only got um, a total of eight colors available. You only need really three. You need black, you need red, and you need white. So that's, that's doable on, on our boards. Okay, so that's one example. This one was coded in BHDL? Yeah. Yeah, it was all done in B it, it, The whole project is, is, I mean, the whole class is VHDL. I thought about switching to Verilog, but I decided to stick with VHDL at least this year. I might uh, think about switching to Verilog next time. Um, one of the former students, um, has done a bit of playing with Verilog and uh, there's some nice open source projects around for Verilog but I couldn't quite spend the time um, that I needed to uh, to get Verilog, to get myself up to speed with Verilog and um, assure myself that Quartus and everything worked nicely with the open source tools that were available. Um, We'll see. I'll uh, if I if I'm teaching it again next year, I'll probably uh, have another go at that. Okay, so that's one example. Here's another example of a possible project, and um, I, uh, I I realise it's it's hard to read. Let me just. Um, wherever Discord got to. Let me just dump this, the actual, uh, PDF into the materials channel. So, uh, once it's uploaded, have a look at it. It's taking a while to upload. It's only three megabytes. Come on. So, um, last time I taught this course, I, I shared an office with uh, 
Professor uh, Luis Rivera. And um, Luis was telling me that uh, he, he had done a, when he was, um, I think he was in his senior year, he was uh, doing a, a digital design project and this was the digital design project or the circuit that uh, he designed for that uh, for that course um, when he was a senior. So um, I thought it would be nice to, uh, as a uh, a bonus assignment um, in 2018, to uh, tell me what this does. And I'm not going to do that this year because I didn't actually get any takers um, in 2018. Um, but uh, have a look at that and see if you can figure out what it's doing. And I'll, uh, I'll go to the discussion forum. Uh, uh, actually, I may have to, I've forgotten whether my um, uh, bot is working because I had to um, I had uh, it's offline it is offline yeah um, I had uh, and should be online now there we go no I had uh, I when was it? Must have been. Um, must have been Wednesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. I had two one-second power dropouts. It barely flickered the lights, but uh, my desktop computer wasn't sitting on a UPS, so uh, that took it down. So I immediately ordered several UPSs. One for the the cable box, one for the Wi-Fi router, and one for my computer. So it's uh, and I I haven't set up the um, the bot to restart automatically on a reboot. So uh, it's running now. So I hope you've downloaded and had a look at that PDF file, and. Uh, I just uploaded it to the materials channel. And Celine, do you have any idea what this might be doing? No response? Let me just... Uh, Make it a bit bigger and still a little faint. I actually uh, had to go to Staples. Right, there's some interesting things here. There's a top sensor, a middle sensor, and a bottom sensor. Whatever that means. There's a little 555 timer here, which looks like it's generating the system clock. Going in order. Sorry? Can I say my idea or are you trying to ask people? I was, I was just asking Celine, but uh, if, if you have an idea, go for it. Is it a coin sorter? Ah, uh, not exactly. Um, it involves coins. Okay. Yeah, we've got a quad D flip flop. We've got a four bit adder. We've got four bit comparators. We've got a seven seg two seven segment displays. Right, there's the word coin, which maybe is master coin clear, right? And we've got lots of LEDs and keypad. Seven 
So any thoughts on what this might be doing? Let me ask somebody else. Thanks, Celine. <laughs> Nasmeen, how about you? Any ideas? One more and then I'll I'll let you know. Adonica. Any thoughts? Okay, so what it is, is it's a, a vending machine, right? The idea is that uh, you can count um, count uh, things coming in, you can make a selection for uh, things coming in. This is the uh, the key input. It's part of the key input. There's the other part of it. And we've got, um, uh, this was a while ago, so the vending machine is only, is stuff around a, a dollar and I think that it's a simple um, thing in that uh, it's only um, it's only allowing quarters to come in I think that's true anyway I don't know whether the uh, I might have to check with uh, Professor Rivera about that I have a quick question yeah what's up it has this weird E symbol greater than 60 is that summation um, yeah, I think that's the, the, the total um, sum is greater. So you can write the, the things in the vending machine cost more than a quarter, right? So the, this is saying that the total um, of coins put in already is more than 40 cents or more than 60 cents. Okay. So I think that's what it's doing. And we should be able to find the, where's it gone? We should be able to find where the, um, those signals are generated, the, the greater than 40 and greater than 60 signals are generated. I thought... They're the comparator at the top left. Oh, there we go, right. So there's the two comparators. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So there's the, uh, that's where the signal's generated. So we're pulling in those numbers and it's just got um, hard-coded values put on, in on one side of the comparator depending on what the what the numbers are. Okay, some of them are going to VCC and some of them are going to, to zero or ground. So the the thought would be to um, for the project would be to reproduce as closely as you could what's happening in this in this device, but doing it in VHDL. For a final project or for another project? For your final project. Okay. And then the other one is to look at, um, as I think I said, uh, 
implementing. And it was Streamlabs gone. And we'll go to bigger me implementing uh, a decoder for it's not looking the best, is it? There we go. Into implementing a code, a decoder for the um, the remote control that came with the box. It doesn't have to be this remote control, but uh, you'd have to find a remote control that is compatible with the IR sensor on the board. Okay. I'm open to any other suggestions. Um, I could think about uh, lots of different things you could do on the VGA side of stuff, not just a game. You could maybe do, if anybody knows um, Conway's Game of Life, uh, you could think about implementing the, the Game of Life and displaying the output of the Game of Life on the, on the VGA. But again, it's going to depend on the person uh, with the board being able to um, uh, display the output of the VGA. Um, other possibilities? Um, there is a, uh, a buzzer on the board. And I could think about um, maybe... Uh, uh, doing something with the buzzer. Um, maybe a, uh, I don't know, I think you could think about doing maybe a reaction timer um, between two of the buttons on the board. That might be a little simple though. I'd rather, I'd rather something that uses a, uh, a protocol. That's why I'm interested in the VGA or the the infrared detectors. So does any group have a, a thought on what they want to do for a project? Let's uh, take somebody again. Way, how about you? Did Is your group have any thoughts about uh, what the project, what a project they could do for the, with the FPGA board is? Uh, we're still trying to figure out what kind of project we can do. I'm not sure yet. Okay. So um, I, I need to know, or at least I need to have a some sort of a decision by next week. So make sure you, you do that. In fact, what I'll do now is... Um, I will um, put in a an assignment. It's not for any marks, but for next week, um, I want you to um, upload a paragraph describing uh, your project. Okay, and we'll make it due the 14th. And it won't be actually worth anything, but I do need to know. And I'll put all the labs across, even though I don't, I think some of those are, um, and just one attempt. So have a think about it amongst your group and um, please submit something. If you already know, feel free to do that now. Um, but I, I would like to, to hear it. Just thought I might quickly See if we can have a quick look at. Right, so this is a VGA connector. Right, 
you've all probably seen them. They're a bit old now. Most uh, video has gone um, either DVI or HDMI, which is a little little different connector. But this is the uh, the standard. The only ones we're really the only signals here that we're really interested in are red, green, and blue, and the horizontal and vertical sinks. Okay, so here is the um, what's happening with the horizontal and vertical sinks. The uh, basically the um, displayed portion, the pixels that you see on the screen, are this piece. There's a blanking interval, a, a horizontal blanking interval and a um, vertical blanking interval that is uh, not displayed. And there's a, a horizontal sink which has a pulse for every, um, at the end of every row. And there's a vertical sink which has a pulse once you get to the end of the frame. Right? So what happens is you do this pixel, you do this pixel, you do this pixel, and you move across. And actually, I think this should happen for every, every pixel and then you get to the end and then you get a pulse to move to the next row, right? So what's happening is um, you're setting the R, G and B values of every pixel as you move across. And let's see, I don't think there's, well that, so there's the, um, some of the numbers right the usual size we we aim for is 640 by 480 pixels and that means you need a, a 25.175 megahertz pixel clock and these are the sorts of numbers that you need to work with for those front porch back porch and the the pulse duration but VGA can take all the way up to 1920 by 1440 and we're not going to be able to generate that sort of a clock rate right 297 megahertz looks like the maybe we could get to uh, 800 by 600 or maybe 1024 by 768. But other than that, we, we, we only have a 50 megahertz clock, so we're better off down this end of the, uh, the VGA timing. Okay, let's go back to, any questions about any of that? Uh, Jordan, yes, um, you're making these projects from scratch. That would be the aim anyway. I have a question. Yeah, what's that, Tavi? It, well, now's the, <laughs> now's the time to get it. So what's, what's the question? So I have uh, an ultrasonic sensor that looks like it just uses I squared, I squared C. Would the uh, FPGA board be able to handle something like that? Ah, so uh, display. That's right now. I'm just kind of thinking, doing like a distance measure and display it on the LCD display. Yeah, that might work. Um. You should be able to get an output that can drive I squared C. I would have to figure it out, um, but I don't see that 
um, I don't see that that's a that's a problem. Okay. So let's let's go back to uh, to Jordan. Um, eek. Sorry, I'm trying to. So um, okay. What do you feel comfortable doing then, Jordan, or a anybody? Right. Um, uh, well, I, th I think my big, the biggest issue I have is I um, I find myself not being able to do these labs unless I um, follow your videos step for step with the errors and everything, and then I I just I get I just get confused. I'm not really uh not really sure I'd be able to do a whole project because the labs themselves are, are hard enough for me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so it's not like I'm just going to say um, do this lab and then drop it, right? I'm still going to be here. I'm still happy to give whatever help is needed. Um, and... I, I'm hoping that uh, that I can give that support, right, to getting you to 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 understand. <clears throat> yeah, Ray, I, I a display that says hi is 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 a pretty low bar, <laughs> right? Um, um, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, for the project, we can oh, we, we don't have to have two different sets of code, correct? Like we do for the labs. What do you mean, for, two different? For each lab partner. Uh, no, no. Um, it's perfectly that this is everybody is doing the same thing, right? So it's it's the one project. Okay. So um, yeah, no, this is a this is a group effort, and uh, uh, so um, Jordan, what I'd suggest is have a think about something you maybe uh, could do. Or your group could do, and uh, type it up, put it in the the that assignment that I just made, and um, let's get you to do that. And if it that means um, going back to uh, uh, something that's a bit you you feel more comfortable with. Um, we can we can work on that, but I, I I do want to stretch you a little bit. I'd want to stretch everybody a little bit. <laughs> Ray, come on, double credit, a second capstone. Oh, I don't think it. Um, so what I, I, what would be an acceptable project? Um, I would rather, I, if, to be honest, I would rather you did something that is a little bit fun. An acceptable project could be, I was, I was just thinking, so, um, it wasn't with the FPGA board. Um, but a while ago, I was playing with an Arduino, right? And um, I happened to have a little piezoelectric buzzer and uh, some other bits and pieces. And uh, the the little FPGA board that I had, no, not FPGA board, the little, actually it wasn't an Arduino. It was, uh, what is it? Uh, oh... 866, one of those little ESP32 modules. And the, it had a little um, 
uh, uh, what do you call it, um, light dependent resistor on it. <clears throat> and so what I decided to do in the Arduino was to make a, uh, uh, a light theremin. I don't know if you know the, the theremin musical instrument. It's, a, a, it's been in horror movies for a long time where it, it makes that weird vibrato uh, sound. Okay, um, okay, then Stephen, we should spend some time today getting to the bottom of why it's, why the board is not sinking. Um, so what, but what I was saying is, that, as an example, um, the FPGA board has a little buzzer on it. And I could think of, it doesn't have a, well, it has an IR sensor and I'm wondering whether we could do something with that IR sensor and making it um, uh, 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 play the buzzer or even just um, use the buttons to to change the tone of what the buzzer is saying you wouldn't want the buzzer going all the time that could be get a bit annoying um, but you could make a, uh, a four note um, musical instrument just by uh, taking the inputs from the buzzers, from the uh, buttons, and making the buzzer change tone. Right? That's the sort of thing. Um, I I would rather you you had a little bit of fun with the project. I don't want to. I don't want you to. Um, uh, you know, as Ray says, make it a, a, a another uh, capstone project. It's not supposed to be quite that difficult right I have another question for you yeah what's that Harvey is there a way to make the uh, computer recognize the FPGA board as a keyboard uh, ooh as a keyboard yeah don't know um, there is a PS2 output on the board, right? And uh, but that's that's sort of connecting a keyboard up to it. Um, I don't know. Okay. That's uh, that's not a bad question. In fact, let's let's just have a little bit of a dig in the um, in the hardware specs of the board. Uh, that's all quarter stuff. No, that's just a little too generic. So this is what I'm looking at. I'm in the, um, this is the, uh, the GitHub repository that I have for the, for the course. And I'm looking at the, um, the board here. There is quite a bit of experimental code here, right? So, um, and the only the only problem with this code is that it's all in Verilog, um, right? So here's a uh, a beeper, and let's just have a look at the is there a .v file? There it is. There. change my um, font size and 
let's turn that off. There we go, that's a bit, bit easier to read, right? So, uh, this is, um, this is Verilog, so it's, it's a little different. In Verilog, the always command is like a, the process command in VHDL. So this is taking the clock and the positive edge of the clock in VHDL we do that rising edge or we do clock event and clock equals one right so this but in Verilog you can make it only do this on a, a rising edge or a positive going edge of the clock and it's just going to increment the count and count is a 28 bit, bit number so um, this is saying look at bit 9 on the 28-bit number and um, when that happens form beep R um, to being those bits of the, uh, the counter and that gets us a uh, three effectively three different tones out of the uh, out of the out of the counter and then the the uh, pin mapper is um, is taking the output beep that's what this piece here is doing it's taking the output beep and it's connecting it straight to the uh, that piezoelectric um, device let's just have a look at that piezoelectric device does the board make whatever sound it wants from each of the three different sources or are the three uh, bits determining the noise? Well, the, the three bits, so each of those bits is, is changing at a different frequency, at a different period. Oh, uh, okay. Right, so adding them together is going to give you something that maybe sounds like three different tones being added together. It's not quite like that, but that, that's... So they're flipping at a frequency. Right, they're flipping at a at a some frequency determined by um, the 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 clock rate and the uh, which bit it is, right? Okay, thank you. It's okay. So there's the um, the buzzer is on uh, is on pin one hundred and ten, right? So we can we can push out the the buzzer. So there is a. Looks like there is an I squared C bus, Harvey, depending on which, <clears throat> what, uh, what yeah, do, so I, yeah. I learned that the LCD display is I squared C and the um, ultrasonic sensor is just I O pins. Okay. Okay. So that's there. Um, yeah, so, um, I'm a little, uh, I don't know, I was hoping maybe people could have told me things were, were uh, not going so well with the existing labs a little earlier, so that's okay, we can spend time. Like I said, I, I don't have anything else left in the semester except getting the labs and the project done, so um, I'm happy to spend time. Uh, Stephen, I think maybe that uh, getting Lab 5 sorted out for you is probably the uh, the most critical because if Lab 5 doesn't work, um, then uh, it's going to be hard to get the other ones working. But I'm happy to spend time with anybody on Lab 6. Um, what I was going to do, and let me... Uh, where is it gone? There. What I was going to do today is talk a little bit, like I said, about the problems various people have been having with the counter and the baseball, the up-down counter and the baseball counter. Um, 
I just wanted to talk about the baseball counter first, if that's all right. Um, let me let me think about the project, and let me come back to you with um, some more doable suggestions about the project. Okay, um, hopefully that'll. Uh, that'll make things a little bit easier. I don't want it to seem insurmountable because it's not insurmountable. And I think you're all perfectly capable of, of getting the uh, some sort of a decent project done. It's just um, I've got to frame it the right way and I've got to give you the right uh, examples that you can work with. Okay, so... Um, this is what the, the counter is supposed to do. Add to balls, add to strikes, reset both counters to zero. Um, the ball counter should go zero, one, two, three, and then reset to zero. The strike counter should go zero, one, two, and then reset both counters to zero. And the uh, count values are displayed on separate seven segment displays. And that's the aim. Now the tricky bit with this is this, the VHDL code has to select a particular digit, right? In this case, D4. And then light up that digit with the appropriate values. Then it has to select another digit, right? Maybe did the next one, which is digit three, and then change what's on this, these inputs to some other value, whatever the, the display is, right? So it's a little tricky. In our case, we're, we're not using all four digits. We're only using two digits because we only need to go from zero to three max um, for the ball counter. And um, I was playing with this lab during the week and there's, there's some stuff we need to talk about as far as getting this to work is concerned. Right, so that first line, alternately select which seven segment digit we are displaying. So there's something in there that has to, in our case, alternate between the two digits. Right, the ball counter digit and the strike counter digit. Um, when a particular digit is selected, we need to display only that number. And one of the things I didn't think about before setting this, this lab is um, the clock on the board is 50 megahertz, right? And the trouble is some of the outputs, in particular the LED outputs, don't respond that quickly. They can't respond in time for a 50 megahertz clock. So what I was when I first did the lab, I had the two um, I had the two uh, digits up there, but because I was running the clock so quickly, um, and the the number that was being sent to each separate um, digit wasn't changing fast enough. I basically got a merging of the two numbers on both on both digits, right? So one of the things I had to do was to slow down the clock significantly, um, so that only. Uh, so that the LEDs had a, had a chance to turn on and turn off when the the selected digit changed. This is within the seven segment display. This is for the yeah. So basically, um, uh, say digit one and digit four, for example, I had to I had to make sure that they were changing at a slow enough rate so that um, any changes here could um, didn't light up the other digit. Okay, and 
what I another thing I found is um, I I don't know about you, but I get really bothered by flickering lights, and um, in particular uh, anything around about the 60 hertz range, which is the the mains frequency. Um, I tend to to get a headache if I see a a 60 hertz flicker flicker. Back in the days of cathode ray tube computer monitors, I had to go around everybody near me's computer and change the refresh rate of their monitors from, usually it was 60 hertz was the default in this country, and I had to change it to 75 hertz. 75 hertz was fast enough so that I didn't get a headache. Um, so coming back to this one, um, I was working with one of the students and I, I was playing with the, the, what that slow frequency was. And one of the, the early frequencies I chose had so much flicker on the, the LEDs that it, it started again giving me a headache. It wasn't quite as bad because it was only, you know, the seven segment displays. Um, but it, it, I had to bump up the frequency a little bit from that low flicker um, because it was it was so annoying. Um, if you've ever uh, if you ever have a chance to look at a um, an an LED display or a seven segment display, um, check it out. If you if you hold your your hand out like that and oscillate it backwards and forwards, you it'll it'll give you a strobe like effect. And you'll be able to see exactly what I'm talking about. You'll be able to see that um, some of the the digits are not set, not fully lit up. Even though when you you just look at the the display directly, it'll 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 look fine. But uh, what you'll see, I have a little one down there, and I. Um, what you should see is um, if you shake your hand backwards and forwards. In, with your eyes looking through it at the display, you should see that uh, those digits change a little bit. How did you change the clock speed that it receives? Um, I just put it in, th I just took the clock and put it through a, a, one of those LPM counter dividers like we did the other day with the... Um, Actually, I didn't even do that. I think I just put a had a separate process. In fact, let me see if I can show you now. Um, do I have a? No, I don't have um, my VPC VNC connector up. Let's just see if we can find it. Do your remote connect to your desktop? Ah, uh, yeah. This is a. Uh, this is a Windows machine. I'm, I'm running the this uh, session on um, uh, on my Mac, but I need a Windows machine um, to run Quartus. So I've got my, an old an old laptop I have a, hanging around. Um, what software are you using that just allows you to boot uh, into it? Uh, it's just called uh, VNC. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, so actually I, I and I, I I stole this code from, from Yasmin, so I, I, I built this up from uh, Yasmin's code. So this is the way Yasmin has done the um, uh, the divider, right? So we've got a, a process that works on a negative edge of the clock and if the count is, um, I've set it to 50,000, um, then we reset the count, otherwise we just increment the counter and if the clock is one less than that, then um, 
we toggle the clock, otherwise we just give the same clock output. Would this give us a, a clock of 1 hertz? Um, this one is basically dividing by 50,000. So 50,000 into 50 million is, what's that? That's about a thousand, that's about a thousand hertz. Got it. Okay. I thought the clock was 50,000, sorry. No, the, the clock is, uh, is 50 megahertz. Okay, so that's, that's where the, the div clock, which is the slow clock, is coming from. Um, so another thing that I, I, I came across is... There's a comment in the chat. Sorry, there's a comment in the chat? Uh, yeah, it's... Um, that's a good question. Yeah, I think it's a fifty. I think it's a fifty percent duty cycle. I haven't actually checked that. Let's go back to the the divider and let's see what's happening. Um, that's a good question. I don't know. Yes, it is going to be a fifty. Yes, it is going to be a fifty percent duty cycle because it's it's just <clears throat> every uh, time four nine 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 comes up, it's going to it's going to toggle. Right, so it's going to be it's going to be fifty. It's going to be a fifty percent duty cycle. But there's nothing really. You, uh, you don't really need to do it this way. You could just use one of those, um, uh, that LPM counter approach that we, we did the other day, right? Um, we could use that way to do it also. Okay. Um, now the, the trick with a lot of processes is you only want to change one output in each process. If you change more than one output in each process, then you'll get errors like, uh, I think I forgot the exact wording, but it says um, multiple sources driving the output. So each process should only change one of the outputs. But of course, oftentimes you want to change multiple outputs based on what's happening in a process. So the way you deal with that is you say, okay, this process is only changing this output, the strike output, for example. But I need to reset the ball output sometimes based on the strike count. So I set a flag that says, hey, ball counter, I need you to reset because the strike uh, has, has gone over three, has gone to three. So there's a nice uh, example on Stack Overflow, which shows an example, right? So um, here's the Here's the, the process that sets the, um, the value of a SIG set, right? It's either zero or one. And here's a, um, sorry, here's the, the thing that uh, needs to reset SIG. SIG is the thing we're trying to set. This is the thing that tells the other process, hey, I need you to reset. And here's the thing that actually determines whether SIG is, is set or reset, right? So here we've got potentially two reset signals coming across. And they might be from two different processes. 
and here we have a, um, a single set flag and it's coming from a third pro separate process that's not shown on this this on this printout um, and that's the way you deal with um, cross process signal setting just as an example here's the um, the way I did the the ball counter right here's the here's the the piece that actually does the ball counter but it's using a flag called reset balls if that flag is one then ball the ball count goes to zero otherwise this process is um, oh that's something else I need to talk about this process is running on is uh, its sensitivity list is the uh, ball increment switch input right and there's it's a bit more than that but I'll, I'll talk about that shortly um, so when that happens if we don't have a reset then on a a falling edge of that uh, ball switch then we we increment the the count of balls right so all this process is doing is managing the value of balls over here we're working on a slow clock right that's not the that's not the 50 megahertz clock that's the 1000 hertz clock that we we we're, we're getting in it might be 500 hertz but regardless it's 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 a slower clock than 50 megahertz and all this one is doing is determining whether the ball count needs to be reset and there are three conditions on which the ball count needs to be reset either the the count of the number of balls has gone over three or the new batter switch is being pressed remember this is active low so NB new batter equals zero means the button has been pressed or the strike counter has gone over two right if any of those three conditions happen then we need to reset the balls we can't just say balls equals zero because that would give us that error about multiple drivers so we set that that flag reset b and then when we, the next time we come in here we get the reset b and um, the balls uh, gets reset to zero and the same or very similar thing can be done with the strike counter um, except it's going to be the uh, this is going to be db underscore s and this is reset underscore s and this is strikes rather than balls okay and what I thought I should do I'm just going to recompile that on the, the laptop um, so I did say um, about this right I think uh, the input from directly from the switch is is actually increment ball count And the trouble with that switch is instead of sorry it's active low isn't it so instead of um, changing like this when we press and release it what actually happens is something more like this
the switch bounces. Right? Because it's a mechanical switch, there's not a... Um, it has no filter. There's no, there's no real... There is a little bit of filtering on there, so it's not quite as bad as I've drawn it. Um, but there is still bounce. So you don't get a single transition when you press the button. So I, what I've done in the code is I've uh, set... Um, uh, I take my switch and I put it through a debouncer. And that's what generates that DBB signal. Let me just uh, see that this is... Yeah, that seems to work. I'm just going to close that because I've got a bit too much sun coming through the window. There we go. So let's... Um, Open that up. Let's see if I can, uh, yeah, let's see if I can. So this is the, um, this is the ball count code, right? So that's the, that's the ball. And when it gets to three, it recycles. That's the strikes. And I can do both and hit the new new batter counter or the new batter button, right, and reset. Okay, so that seems to be doing the right thing. What I'm going to try now, though, is um, I just want to show you Let's just see if we can slow it right down and show you exactly what's really happening on the um, on the device to show you that the um, each uh, seven segment display is being displayed in turn. Okay, so what I've just done is I've I've really slowed down the division by another factor of a thousand so instead of running at either a thousand hertz or 500 hertz it's now going to be running at either one hertz or half a hertz can i ask a question as we wait that's is one limit <laughs> to is there a limit to the number of processes you could put in bhdl no no there's there you can put as many as you need basically um you know the the limits in vhdl are these numbers here right the total logic elements this this baseball counter has a total of 6272 logic elements um it's uh we're only using it's got 92 pins we're only using 14 of them it's not it's got a bit of memory but we're not using any of it it's got some multipliers we're not using any of them it's got some pll's we're not using any of them these are the the only real limits for this particular device that we're using on the board okay okay so let's have a look at that now 
right? So now I've really slowed it down. The only change I made to the code is to change that clock rate. Right, and I just hit the button twice and you see, you saw how slowly um, it updated, right? It's, it's not gonna change Okay, so it's, it's, um, that's kind of cool. Sorry, I, 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 I only thought about doing this, um, while I was talking about the, the, uh, explaining the, uh, how the, the displays light up. Okay, so it's now really slowly selecting one digit, displaying that digit, selecting the other digit, displaying that digit. And I'll see if I can show you. I don't know whether it'll show up properly. Um, but let's just. Make it go 10 times faster. And we should have a break shortly. Let me just show you this um, this one, and then we'll uh, have our usual ten minute break. I'm a little later than normal for that. Okay, so now it's a little faster, but it's still uh, it's still flickering, right? You can still see the even though that should be about ten times faster. It's still uh, you can still see the flickering. Whereas where when I started this example, um, you couldn't see that. The, the separate digits being lit up at all. Right? They are separate digits, it's not the same two that's being displayed. Okay. There are a couple of other things I want to talk about, um, but I'll, I'll I'll leave the uh, I'll leave that until after we're done um, with a with a short break, a ten minute usual ten minute breaks. Any questions before we go to break? Okay, if not. Um, Let's leave it there and I'll, uh, I'll be back in about 10.
Okay, let's uh, see about coming back. Okay, so I've just been playing with, uh, again, with the, um, the clock rate on that, uh, on that board and I've, I've made it faster by another factor of 10 which is still slower than what it was when I first showed you right and you can I can it the flicker looks much more pronounced when I look at it directly but you can still see here on the on the screen a bit of flicker right um, so I need to to bump it up yet again to a, a, a higher value so I think I had it at, I think it was 50,099. So I'm just going to redo that again. So we'll just run this. Okay, and now you can see that it's, you can't see the flicker and I can't see the flicker on my, on my end either. So I did have one other thing I wanted to talk about. And that is um, when you create a process um, and you set the output value, every path through the process needs to set that value, that signal value. Right? It doesn't have to be an output, but it needs to set that signal value. If it doesn't, if there is a path through the process that doesn't set that signal value, then you're going to get a, a warning like the one at the bottom of the screen now. It's going to say inferring latches for signal or variable output, which shows its previous value in one or more paths through the process. So the, the idea is that in order for the process to set the value of output, um, it has to know uh, what the new value is. And if the value doesn't change, it needs to remember what the previous value was. That remembering what the previous value was creates a latch, uh, a flip-flop, which holds the value so that at the end of the process, the process can set the value of output appropriately. In this example, if input is one, then the value of output gets to set to zero. 
right? So, um, and that, that, that works fine. That's perfectly okay. It's only when uh, input is not one, if it inputs zero, then the process, oops, doesn't know what, um, what the value of output is. So it needs to remember what the previous value is. So be aware Um, so be aware that um, uh, if that warning shows up that you need to fix your process to make sure that a, a value is set for output through every path through. Okay. I don't think I have anything else to talk about. Right? So, um, what I think... Actually, there was one more thing that I, I, I did want to mention. Um, for Lab 7, and let me see if I can grab Lab 7 over here. And do I have a Lab 7? Uh, that's going to be close enough, I think. <clears throat> yeah, so... One issue that I've found with Lab 7 is sometimes it's not clear how things get connected to LPM counters, right? And in particular, this one here, this thing here, the purple thing is a, let's just see if I can, right, this thing here is a, this purple thing here labeled Q7 down to zero is a bus and it looks like it's connected to this LPM counter. Trouble is it's not. This end here needs to actually be on the output. So you need to connect that up in order to make sure that that's connected. I had a problem with this. One of the, the students I've been talking to had a problem with it. If you your system doesn't seem to be working, check out that there was, there was, there's, um, uh, that all the connections are there, right? So sometimes you need to go through and delete pieces, maybe, right? And check to see that things are actually connected. It was another issue I had where this one was connected to here and it looked like this was just saying this one's connected here and this one's connected here but in fact both of these were shorted together right so be very careful with this way of looking at um, uh, circuits it's not very user friendly as far as checking the connections are concerned Okay, um, let's, let's go back and talk a little bit more about the project. I'm, I'm concerned that people are thinking that this is overwhelming. 
Um, and I don't want you to think that. So let's go back here and have a bit of a talk about what we want to do. I want you to do the labs, right? Labs, uh, I think we currently have outstanding six, seven and eight modulo, a problem with lab five with one group. So, um, I think uh, that's okay. I think the final is okay. It would be nice if people did the game. The game is fun. Sorry? The game is nice. The game is nice? Yeah, I think it's, it's a little long. It's a bit long. Yeah, that's why I, I started at the beginning of semester, right? <laughs> um, so people are thinking that this piece is too much. And maybe the examples I've, I've been given are a bit, a bit too much. Um, so what I'm going to suggest is um, that we do two possible things. We take 10% from the projects and move it there. We take 10% from the projects and move it there. If anybody wants to do a project, we can make that a 20% bonus over and above everything else. Right? I do want you to finish off the lab experiments. If, if you're finding them tough going, then let's give you more time to do them. If and I, I, I haven't changed the um, I haven't changed the due dates yet, but I'm perfectly okay with pushing out those due dates to well, end of semester is obviously a hard limit, but um, they don't have to be due today or next week or whenever the the, the current due dates are. Okay, but I do want you to do them and I do want you to write them up. Just as a reminder, the process is right, design, test, deploy. Right, so you do the design in VHDL. You do the test bench, and then you check that it works on the board. Okay. What do people think of that? Jordan, what do you think of that approach to uh, getting to the end of semester? Because I, I, I don't want to... I don't want to make things feel overwhelming, but I do want to see you try to do some stuff that's a bit harder. Uh, yeah, so Matt, that would make the game and the project let's uh, let's work it out the the game is already optional it would make both of those optional right so there's a 30 percent that disappears what that does is it effectively 
increases the percentages um, for the labs, the midterm and the final by whatever it is. Um, what is it going to be? 70 over 30? Is that right? No, it's not right. Um, it's going to be... Uh, right, so 30 plus 10 plus 30 is then going to be um, scaled up. So that that's out of 70. So effectively the labs are going to be 30 on 70. The midterm is going to be 10 on 70. And the final is going to be again 30 on 70. Does that make sense? Yep, that's okay. Um, certainly plan on, on doing whatever. I, I just want to make sure that there's a, a path through that you can see that it'll, you know, it'll be doable. Um, and I always like having fallback positions, right? So that you can you can get to a, a reasonable outcome. As you know, on the the capstone project, right? There's there's stuff where we have to back off on some of the uh, the things we thought at the beginning of last semester, and it's not. That's correct, Jacob. Yeah, they're still due, um, but I, and I haven't changed the due dates yet. Uh, Jordan, yeah, that's right. The final is another oral exam. That's correct. It'll be the same format. There'll be a, an oral component and a written component. What I'll probably do with the written component is make it a little bit more of a... Uh, it'll be still technical but it'll be more of a reflection and I'll give you something an example to reflect on and I'll do the same thing I'll do the interview part the oral part I'll give you feedback on your qualitative feedback on the um, uh, oral component and then there'll be a written component which you have to submit within whatever it is, two hours. Um, uh, well, that's, that's why I released the, um, that's why I released the final exam, right? Um, I'm aiming to uh, do exactly like I did with the midterm. I, I'll, I'll release the final exam um, at least two weeks out. I'm hoping I'll get it a bit out a bit earlier, but it's the end of semester for everybody, so everything's coming due. Um, but I'll I'll aim to give you at least two weeks, so you can see the uh, what's on the the oral exam. Um, and I hope you realise there was nothing that I asked in any of the oral exams for the midterm that wasn't at least implied to be there on the midterm right i i did certainly ask follow-up questions um but there was nothing uh completely out of the blue that i asked um during the the oral component of the midterm and i i i'm okay with surprising students sometimes but i'd rather surprise you in class rather than uh, on an exam Uh, you mean when you, when, Jacob, do you mean when you can book your slot? Um, I'm hoping, yeah. Okay, uh, I'll, um, I'll set that up shortly. Hopefully in the next, uh, over, be, before next week, but I'll, I'll set it up on that same link. I'll, I'll probably remove the, well, I will remove the, uh, the midterm oral, because we, we've, we've done that already. But, um, yeah, I'll set it up on that same link. Okay. And 
again, you you can book whenever you have time available. Um, if uh, there are no slots available when you need to be it to happen, just send me an email and I'll I'll sort it out. Okay. Um, I don't have anything else much to talk about. So if you want to uh, get your labs done and let me help you with them. Right, so join Q if you want. Um, Stephen, I don't know whether we want to uh, try something to get, uh, get your thing working. That's a, a little painful. So let me let me do this. Um, by next week, I'll write up what I just. Yeah, effectively, Jordan. Um, let let well. Why don't we just do that? Those calculations now, right? So um, let's just put over here. We've got um, we've got labs currently worth thirty percent. We've got the project, which is currently worth 20%. We've got the game, which is currently worth 10%. We've got the midterm, which is worth 10%. And we've got the final, which is worth 30. That's where we started the semester. Okay. And what I'm suggesting now is so that I think 50 50 yeah so that adds up to 100 what I'm suggesting now is one option is to split the 20% of the projects between the labs and the game right so that would make the labs worth 40% the project worth zero, the game worth 20%, the midterm worth 10, and the final worth 30. And again, that's 30, that's still adding up to 100. What would happen to students that don't have a game? Um, okay, so let's... Uh, Let's start with the original, right? So this column here is the original and no game. And I realize there are three of you who are in, at least three of you who are in that position, right? So that means we need to take that 10% and I think it's just going to um, the default is it's just going to scale up these other numbers by um, by the appropriate amount. So that means the total is now out of, uh, let's just kill that. The total is now out of 90, right? So uh, 30 on 90 will be 33.3, .3, I think. It's not... Uh, Ah, normally Google gives me a calculator when I put that in, but it's, uh, there we go. Right, so that'll make the labs worth 33%. The project is then going to be worth, and again, I haven't, I'll need to do another column as well that this project will scale up also to 22.2. .2. The midterm will scale up to 11. And the final will also scale up to 33.3. .3. Okay, that's, that's without taking into account option A. 
right? So now let's have a look at option A, no game, right? So that means now we've got uh, 40, 10, and 30, so that's 80. So that will make the labs worth 50%, no project, no gain. Um, the midterm, I think that makes it going to be worth 12.5%, and I think that makes the final worth 37.5%. Does that make sense, Yasmin? Yes, thank you. Okay. Now, for the two option A's, I think what I said earlier, for the two option A's, it's possible that if you do a project that there is a bonus of up to 20% of the course grade. Okay, so if you want to do a project, and it, it doesn't have to be as complex as maybe the three examples I gave, right? It does have to be reasonably complex, and I think I remember um, Last time, uh, where's it gone? I think I remember last time I, um, I didn't actually set a, uh, a, um, I didn't actually explicitly say it had to be VGA or it had to be a protocol or anything like that. All I said is that the the complexity had to use a certain number of... Um, oh, it doesn't bring up the... There we go. Right. Um, it had to use a certain number of logic elements on the device. Right, so um, just to make it a, a reasonably complex device. Sorry, just so if we don't do the project, the game is worth more. Um, So at the moment, I have four options on the board. Where we started, and then option A drops the project, um, and then uh, option A, no game, also drops the game. Okay, so... Um, I don't want any student to be particularly disadvantaged, but effectively, um, yes, if you select option A, that is drop the project, I'm splitting the 20% that was going on the project between the labs and the game. Um, so that does increase the uh, what the game is worth. So is this a collective decision or will every student pick their own option whether or not they do the game I um, what I suggest is you leave it up to me which one you get um, in on an individual basis and I'm going to choose the the option that gives you the highest grade okay I will make all Op all of these options visible within Blackboard, if I can figure out how to do it, including your final grade. And that way you should be able to see which of these is applicable to you. 
and that gives you the I, I don't want to disadvantage any student I don't want to say you have to choose option A and that doesn't give you as good a grade as option A with no gain right um, but I'll uh, I'm, I'm happy to to set up blackboard to calculate the best option for each individual student that's pretty easy to do okay does that make sense yeah okay that's correct Jordan if you do everything then um, it's possible to get uh, 120 out of uh, uh, out of 100 percent yep no that's okay um I I'm not generally a big believer in penalties for some things yes but for as far as grades are concerned I'm much more of a believer in bonus grades than than penalties on grades. Um, I think it uh, provided the the one hundred percent flat level is is enough for me to be happy that you've learnt the course. I'm happy to add other potential bonuses. And no, yeah. Any other questions about what I've just? I realise this is. Um, I, I just. From what the, the the class was saying earlier, I I, I didn't want you to feel um, inundated with stuff. I do want you to learn the stuff, but I don't want you to feel overwhelmed by it. And if that's starting to the, get there, then we need to stop it now and get you to um, learn the stuff appropriately. Okay, um, like I said, um, the, the aim now is to get to the end of semester and get those projects done. I haven't changed the due dates yet, I can do that now. Um, if anybody needs help with labs, feel free to, uh, to join the queue and I will see you momentarily um, if you want to do the labs offline that's fine um, let's leave the session now um, <clears throat> but I do want you to get the labs done so let's see where the labs are at the moment right lab six is due let's push Let's push everything out, right? So this is the individual lab. And I think I need to actually edit the assignment. Right, and let's choose something. Let's push it out to the 21st. Okay, so I push that one out there. Um, <clears throat> I, I made the mistake, and I did it with this class as well, I made the mistake of the other class of uh, making something due over the Thanksgiving break. So I'm going to avoid doing that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these three group ones. So that's going to be that's just a, a selection so that group one there our project that's just asking you to to tell me if you're going to do a project or not okay so please I'll leave that one for next week so um, it's not worth anything I'm going to move this one out to um, let's make it December 5th All right this is the group up down counter one that way you can get it done.
and that's the December 5th one and I'll move um, lab 6 should be doable in a couple of weeks time so get that one done um, the baseball counter I will also move to December 5th if you need more time, just let me know during our class sessions. Okay, so for next week, please let me know whether your group intends to do a project or not. And if you can, let me know what you're going to try and achieve. Um, the lab six glitches one is due in two weeks time that should give you if you thought it was due today that should give you plenty of time what I'd suggest is as I always do for both group and individual assignments mm -hmm. homework assignments and labs I give you three attempts if you have a write-up to date I suggest you, and because it was due today, I suggest you submit it today. I will give you feedback. That will give you a chance to improve the grade um, before the due date. And I've pushed the due date out to, to two weeks from today. Same with Lab 7. You don't have to wait until the 5th to submit it. Submit an early draft and I'll give you feedback and then you have two other chances to submit. So please make sure you take advantage of that. Okay. So what I might do next week is I will have class. If you need lab help, I'm happy to, to do the lab help. Um, but what I will do in lieu of anybody needing help is I will start work on a VGA project and um, you can help me work through how to get that VGA project going. Uh, might be a, a bit of a challenge to do it online, but uh, we'll, we'll see. Everybody okay with that? It is pushing it out. We do have to get everything done by about the 12th. So there, there is a hard deadline, but I think um, where it's got to. I do think setting this up will will work. Right. So just to reiterate, both of those are there, but with this option it's possible to get 120 and with this option it's also possible to get 120 with that uh, potential bonus if you do. I would suggest everybody tries to do a little bit of a project even if you don't get the full 20% it's still free money right it's still an extra even if you got five percent extra it's that's still the difference between a um i don't know a, a c minus and a c plus or a c plus and a um a b ish depending on whether it's a high c plus or not right so i'd suggest trying um but there's no obligation Okay, so um, let's leave it there. I will be here. I'll stay online now. Um, let me know if you need help with the labs. I think I'm going to play with, uh, with the baseball counter a bit more. Right, there's an example 
of how to do the display. Yasmin, okay. So, Yasmin, what do you want to do? Do you want to, what do, do you want to? Um, so, I have a question about the baseball counter on Blackboard. You have it so that it flashes twice when it reaches four and the ball reaches four. Okay, where is this? And In the labs, yeah. In the labs, the leftmost seven segment display is to indicate the balls zero, one, two, three. Once the ball counter reaches, the LEDs are flashed twice and the counters both reset. Okay. And then the rightmost seven segment display is to indicate the strike zero, one, two. Once the strike counter strike counter reaches three, the LEDs are flashed three times and the counters are both reset. So I'm not exactly sure how to make it flash. Okay, so um, that's a that's a good question, and I, I I must admit I haven't done that in uh, well it's it's your code there at least or at least I started with your code, um, right? So let's let's think about how to do that. Also, another thing, um, do you want me? How do you want it to be flash? Like once the balls reaches four, you want it to flash four, then blank, then four. Then a zero, or is it four zero, four zero, or is it three zero three zero? Ah, so I was thinking it's not the seven segment display that's flashing. It's the 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 separate LEDs. Oh, then that's much easier. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that uh, I I wasn't trying to make it ludicrously hard, right? I was just I was just trying to, um, uh, you know, give some indication that it, that a reset had happened, other than the the numbers on the counters changing, right? Okay, then I can do that. Um, and do you want it to display a four before or not? Um, I don't think it needs to display a four. I don't think the the strike counter needs to display a three. Right. Okay, but let's um, yeah. Let me uh see about. Is that is that all the question you had? Yeah, that was it. Okay, cool. Um. So what I might do is I might see about how to um. How to flash. Right. The idea is that oops, that I. I want to, when the ball counter gets reset, LEDs are flashed twice. And when the strike counter is reset, LEDs are flashed three times. So one thing I need that I don't have yet is um, an output for the LEDs, right? And that's going to be a student logic vector Wish I could type, it'd be wonderful. Stood at logic vector three to down to zero. Right, so now I've got some LEDs that I can flash. The other thing I need is I need a couple of signals to flash based on the ball count. And to flash based on the strike count. I don't know whether that's going to do the right thing, but let's try it. And then in here, Now, when do I need to, um, so here, 
what do I need to do? I need to Once the ball counter reaches four, the LEDs are flashed twice. So the ball counter, when the ball counter reaches four, so if the balls are greater than, I think I need a separate, I think I need a separate process, right? So do flash ball and this is a process that's going to run off the the div clock again. Let's try that again. Right, I'm going to begin, I'm going to end the process. And then I want a um, something like that. And end it. And if the um, the default option is that we're not going to flash the ball but the other option is if when we do want to flash the ball we'll flash the LEDs for the ball we do that okay So we want to do something like that. That should say, and we'll, then we also want to do something similar for the strikes. Is flash B just tied to the pen of the LED then? Uh, no, we haven't done that yet. We haven't done the, we, we need at least another process to flash the ball LED or the LEDs for the ball. And I'm, but I also need a, another process here to deal with the strikes. Right, so so that's strike, and this should be flash s, uh, flash s, and do flash strike. That's the end of the process, and here we want um, strikes to be greater than two. Okay, so now we have a flag that gets thrown um, when we want to flash the LEDs. Um, and maybe this is a bad name, so let's call uh, and we want to do this process on the flash B signal. And we want to do a second process for the flash strike. I see what you mean by having many processes. Right. And it, it's it, the the trouble with trying to make one enormous process is you always get caught up with um, either that register issue that I I, I talked about earlier, or um, you get caught up with um, the logic is not quite right. Right? If you decompose it down into lots of little processes it's much easier to get each little process to work the way you expect than it is to get a big process to do its thing appropriately
Okay, so now we've got a um, a process Ooh. I'm wondering whether we do this some, somehow differently. I was thinking we should um, have this in the sensitivity list, but I'm starting to wonder whether we might just do it without the sensitivity and just use weights. Right, so um, this is if flash b equals 1, then, right, and what we want to do is, ooh, ooh, we're going to have the same problem. Right, I can't set LEDs in this process and in this process. I need to um, let's just set them, and then what we might have to do is we might have to pull out an intermediate variable that we set differently in the different processes. But what I was thinking of here is LEDs is a stidit logic vector, three down to zero. So we might, um, and it's active low. And what did we, what did we have to do for the ball count? We wanted to uh, flash twice. So there's once, and I'm wondering if we can do, and we need to turn it off. And I'm wondering if we can do a weight inside here. I don't know whether that's going to let it's going to let me do that, but let's try that. I'm coding on the fly, and I, I should have done a bit of more thinking about this. It's just uh, that uh, yeah, has been brought up the issue, so I thought I might. Um, now I'm not. I don't know whether my. Uh, my coding is quite correct. No, it's not. Let's see what it's complaining about. Wait, process statement must contain either a sensitivity list or a wait statement. Wait statement must contain condition clause with until keyword. Ooh. See, I usually only use um, I usually only use uh, weight statements in um, test benches where you don't need to do that. And maybe I can't use a weight for in synthesizable code. So I might have to do something else. Mm. 
Right, so that's the problem. I can't use a weight. Let me uh, see if I can find an example. Hmm. Yeah, this is synthesizable code, so I can't do that wait for example there because it won't be uh, won't be synthesizable. It means it it can't be um, pushed to the FPGA. The FPGA doesn't have a way for delaying for five hundred milliseconds. So let's see if there's another way we can do this. I'm not sure how to do this because um, what we need to do is we need to do something like count for a certain number of clock ticks. Um, and the trouble with that is after a single clock tick, the, uh, the flash B variable will be reset. Right, so it will no longer be one. So we can't come back into this process after the uh, after we enter it. And let's let's see about this. Right, so let's just I'm just going to remove this flash for strike, and I'm going to remove. Well, I'm I'm not going to take out the weights. We do want to do that with the LEDs, so we want to we want to flash the LEDs. But how are we going to do this? Well, we need to say we probably need yet another variable, which says um, start flashing, right? And then we need to uh, flash twice for balls. And we need so we need to set a, a a flash counter. So let's let's set a flash counter. You know, and so we need a um, signal flash counter, and that's an integer, right? Just like our balls and strikes. And when we get that flash counter, I'm just just for now. Um, I'm just going to comment out this code because it's not really quite what I want just yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to think, well, um, 
while I'm here, I'm going to increment the flash counter. Right? And then um, uh, if flash counter equals, and let's think about it, I don't know, uh, it's going at a thousand hertz, so if it equals a thousand, um, right, then we want uh, to turn on the LEDs. Else, if the flash counter is 2000, and I think we need it then there, then we, we turn off the LEDs. And then we could do something similar again. So remember, this is the ball counter, so we want to do it twice. So if that's 3,000, and if that's 4,000, then we're done. So that's just... Uh, and we'll do another catch-all. And we want that one to be all ones as well, right? So this is driven by the clock. We're going to, to um, count up. And once the flash counter, in fact, I probably want it, they want it to be turning it on. So I want its active low again. So I need to invert the logic. Okay, so once I, my flash counter reaches a thousand, uh, I'm going to turn it on. Once it reaches two thousand, I'm going to turn it off. Once it reaches three thousand, I'm turning it on again. Once it reaches four thousand or otherwise, um, actually we could say uh, just greater than four thousand, and that would mean we wouldn't have to have those two else's. And let's just see if that compiles. Seems to be compiling. Let's see what happens when I push it to the uh, the board. Okay, nothing's happening on the LEDs. And do you know why? It's because I haven't set up the pins to go to the LEDs. So let's set up the pins to go to the LEDs. Right, there are my LEDs and they're, they're not going anywhere at the moment. So let's... Uh, go back to my pinouts. And find the pins for the LEDs. 84 through 87. Right, so... Uh, 
LED3, let's make that LED, so pin 84, and then pin 85, and then pin 86, and then pin 87, oops, 87. Okay, that's there the that's my pin planner. And now let's recompile. That should actually connect up that uh, those LED outputs to the LEDs on the board. Okay, let's program the device and see what it's doing now. Still no flashing LEDs. Oh, well. Started off at zero. Let me just um, probably, if we wanted to keep flashing, we probably want uh, to reset it once we get to. Uh, we probably want to reset it to zero. So let's just do that. Okay, um, I'm going to Okay, that's compiled. Let's see if that does anything. Still no LEDs flashing. I'm wondering what I'm doing wrong. Okay, uh, looks like I don't have much of a a uh, an audience. Harvey, you're there, and uh, Abraham's there, and Zach. So I'm just going to shut down 